Where will you be in five years from now? Impossible to know, right? But predicting and indeed shaping and accelerating the future is what it's all about here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Making today's impossible, tomorrow's universal. And one of the themes here at the MWC is 5.5G. Now for those of you who haven't even got 5G, what does 5.5G mean and what will it unlock? Well that's a question that Transform Talks asked of Barry Ho, the Vice President of Huawei's Wireless Solutions. But first, Emir Halilovic, Telecom Technology and Software Research Director at the consultancy Global Data. Well, 5.5G is primarily taken as the next evolutionary step in 5G technology. Uh, and by evolutionary, I mean it's one of those kind of mid-life cycle upgrades to the technologies that we have already seen in the past with previous generations of mobile. They're going to take 5G to, a next, to the next level, let's say, of functionality, of use case support, the services support as well. So what are you looking forward from that sort of scale of development and who do you think will benefit most or what sectors would benefit most? Yeah, well, uh, first and foremost, it is going to, as I mentioned, uh, increase the capabilities of 5G in a few crucial areas so that uh, next uh, generation of services for both consumers and for enterprises is going to become uh, possible. So those uh, increased capabilities are primarily uh, increased uplink performance, uh, lower latency, ability to um, um, increase the number of devices connecting to the network at once, and also all sorts of like non-mobile phone devices are going to profit from this, uh, like devices requiring low power operation, devices that uh, are used for different uh, Internet of Things kinds of applications and so on. Um, all that is going to be the focus of these enhancements to the 5G technology which are coming with 5.5G. Although 5G is only three years, uh, but it developed fast, modern industrial expectation. I could give you some figure. 240 network uh, commercial launched in last three years and the 5G users already reach 1 billion. If we look at the ecosystem, there are more than 800 phones now support 5G. So we could see from the industry and ecosystem point of view, 5G is mature enough. And also we can look at a little bit on the operator's financial result, also shows a very good achievement. We looked at uh, top 20 5G operators in the world. Last year, their average revenue increased between 4% to 6%. If compared to the overall global operators, which is only a 1% increase. So 5G did play uh, an important role here. And then uh, for the Huawei supported uh, uh, operators, the total up is increased by almost 10%. So 5G also has good upselling if compared to 4G. And what other dimension is there to realize business monetization from 5G? Yeah. After we migrate uh, user to 5G, then this is a good question how to continue monetize, okay, uh, based on our uh, 5G users. Okay, there are mainly two ways. Uh, downlink, uh, we call premium downlink, and uh, uplink monetization. Okay, for the premium downlink, there are two options. First option, we call, we give different uh, level of priority to the users, and uh, VIP users could enjoy more speed, better speed, okay, than the common users. This is one way. This is already done in some leading uh, uh, operators, for example, uh, uh, DNA in Finland, okay? So they are already uh, give different care of priority to different users. Second, one, second option is uh, uh, we not only give the, be uh, the best uh, speed to the web users, we only give them committed uh, speed, okay? For example, in some critical scenario, if we want to have a video, uh, important business video meeting, okay, with your boss, for example, okay? and you need to guarantee the 20 megabps download speed. So now our solution, 5G solution could support that. Maybe you heard about it, uh, heard about it, 5G slicing. It's a personal slicing technology. To make sure in the uh, critical time, critical place, you can get a guaranteed bit rate. So what can we learn from the success of 5G, the business success of 5G as we evolve towards 5.5G? Okay, 
uh, we also have some <laughs> insight on this point. As you know, uh, uh, if we can remember, from 4G to 5G, the biggest change is uh, the video app. You know, in 4G era, uh, the, the video is produced by professional teams. We call it the PGC, okay, professional generated content. But now we move to 5G, the most popular app is TikTok, short videos, okay. So TikTok, okay, the video is generated by personal, by consumers, okay. We call it UGC, user generated content. So if we look forward, now AI is more and more mature, like ChatGPT. So maybe in the future, the AI, okay, could support AI GC, AI generated content, which will require uh, nice latency and more data, you know, for the uh, for for the users. Now uh, under 5G, okay, uh, the video user, I mean, for the TikTok, uh, the the bandwidth requirement is four to ten megabps. But uh, if we, in the AI GC, okay, AI generated content, the bandwidth requirement will be more than fifty megabps per user. Okay, so it means one base station now uh, need at least uh, 5 gigabps, which cannot be supported by 5G. So we need a 5.5G, even 6G.